Welcome back to Cardinal80s.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Six Months of Set Theory and Higher Order Logic. In this video, we're going to be looking at the universal class, or the universal set. Is it a set? We don't know yet. So far in this series, we've not made a distinction between classes and sets, but I've kind of pussyfooted around it. In the next video, we're going to make a very clear distinction, but for now, we're simply going to say that sets are a type of class, a claim that we'll prove later, and all of the rules that we have gone over so far related to membership and subsets apply to classes as well. Classes are a broad category, sets are a specific category, and we'll see why there are certain classes that don't count as sets when we look at Russell's paradox and how that poses a problem for set theory and how class set theory has tried to get around that paradox. We're going to go into all of that in greater depth in an upcoming video, but to have the foundation for that we need to get the terminology, and the terminology right now is that classes and sets are different. Due to Russell's paradox, we cannot have a set of all sets, or universal set. Once again, once we start getting into some of the axioms, we're going to prove that more rigorously, but for now, check out my videos on Russell's paradox and some of the problems there, and that'll show a little bit of why this is the case. The best that we can settle for is the class of all sets, not the class of all classes, because that's going to run into the exact same problem, but the class of all sets. Classes, just like sets, are things that have members in them. They're groups. They obey all the same rules as sets, at least so far. There's going to be a couple axioms that we'll see, which make that important distinction between classes and sets. But for now, class is big, sets are small, and the universal class is the class that contains every single set. Every member of the universal class is a set, and all sets are members of the universal class. So the universal class contains as members all possible sets. It is not a set itself, since due to Russell's paradox, it cannot contain itself. There's some versions of set theory which will try to include a universal set by banding some of the other rules of set theory. For now, like I said, we're sticking with set class theory, which is going to separate these into two different types of things. There's pros and cons to that approach as opposed to others, and we'll cover those in future videos. But for now, this is what we're sticking with, just to get you the basics and the other understanding of the rules as they are. Once you have that basics and understanding, then we can go back and offer some of those critiques of this structure that we have. But we got to get the structure first. For now, we'll stick to a version which simply includes a universal class instead of a universal set. And that universal class contains all sets. A universal object, either a set, a class, or something else, is that grouping which contains all sets as members. These objects are referred to as capital V, this Greek letter, or sometimes a capital U. In this series, we're going to speak of the universal class. We're going to refer to it as V. I might do it as U accidentally once or twice, but V is what we're going to try to refer to it as. We're not going to formally define this class, however. We will look at six axioms for this month and two in the next month, which will sufficiently determine that V is what we call a basic universe. In future months, we'll add, look at options of other axioms to add. Because we don't explicitly define it, we're going to provide a bunch of axioms that tell us things about it and its members and its subsets, but we're not going to explicitly define every single member of that because we can't because they're all sets and our definition of set is going to be wrapped up in being a member of that class so we can't just kind of circularly define sets as a member of that and that is the class of all sets if that makes sense instead we're going to provide axioms that explain some of the properties of things that are members of v up next Classes versus sets. The difference between classes and sets in set class theory. Watch this video and more here at cardades.org. Watch a new video every single day for 30 days here in October and stay skeptical, everybody.